This video will demonstrate the use of a Millipore Pelican Mini Tangential Flow Filtration, or TFF, unit for the purpose of concentrating bacteria in aqueous samples. An overview of the concentration process will be given, followed by cleaning and maintenance procedures, and finally an example concentration of 5 litres of environmental sample. In this method, the feed flows tangentially across the surface of the filter at a positive pressure relative to the permeate or filtrate side of the filter. This pressure differential encourages filtration of a proportion of the sample which is termed the permeate. The remainder of the sample is retained on the feed side of the membrane as retentate. When using the TFF to concentrate samples, the retentate is returned to the feed tank. The constant washing of the filter surface with the recirculating feed prevents filter fouling which might be experienced with dead end filtration techniques. Cassettes and plastic separators shown here are stored in a 1% formaldehyde solution at 4 degrees C. The feed enters the cassette through this hole indicated here. The retentate exits the cassette through the hole indicated here. The permeate exits the cassette through this point indicated here. This exit indicated here allows the permeate pressure to be measured with the addition of a pressure gauge. These millipore cassettes have a surface area of 0.1 m2 and a nominal pore size 0.22 micrometers. This is the manifold plate. The retentate is collected from this port. The permeate is collected from this port. The feed enters the cassette through this port and the final port allows for the addition of a permeate pressure gauge. Plastic separators may be used as spacers between cassettes. The filtration cassette is fitted to the manifold, aligning the grooves present in the top and bottom of the cassette with the screw connections on the manifold plate. The feed, retentate and permeate ports in the cassette will line up with the ports in the manifold plate. The holder is then tightened with a small torque wrench to compress the filtration cassettes between the manifold plate and an end plate. The sample is pumped using a peristaltic pump from the feed tank to the feed port indicated here. The retentate exits the cassette here and would be recirculated during concentration. Permeate is collected from this port indicated here and the final port allows for the addition of a permeate pressure gauge which is not fitted in this unit. Having installed the filtration cassette, the system is flushed with deionized water or similar. Flush water must be pure to avoid fouling the cassettes. Air bubbles can be removed by manipulating the manifold and connected tubing. Flush the retentate side of the cassette until a total of 12 litres per metre squared of filter has been removed from the retentate port. Partially close the retentate valve to encourage permeate production and continue flushing the system until a total of 70 litres per metre squared of filter has been removed from the permeate port. A cleaning solution is then recirculated through the system for approximately 30 minutes. The retentate valve should be fully opened and closed several times to wet all internal surfaces. The solution, concentration and duration of cleaning is dependent upon the filtration cassette selected. The flushing procedure is repeated as previously described. A sanitising solution is then recirculated for approximately 30 minutes. The feed, retentate and permeate lines are all fed into the storage tank. The solution, concentration and duration is dependent upon the cassettes selected. Fully open and close the retentate valve several times to fully wet internal surfaces. The system is flushed once more as previously described. The normalised water permeability, or the passage of clean water through the cassette under standard conditions, can be used as a measure of cassette integrity. To begin the concentration procedure, the feed and retentate lines are placed in the feed tank. The permeate line is placed in a permeate collection vessel, which can be allowed to overflow and drain. 
the feed and retentate pressure can be changed by adjusting the pump speed and retentate valve and monitored on the feed and retentate pressure gauges. They should be set to create a transmembrane pressure significant enough to encourage filtration, but not so great as to significantly reduce the flow across the filter, which may lead to the formation of a gelatinous surface layer. The environmental sample recirculating back to the feed tank will reduce in volume as permeate is produced. To prepare one litre of concentrated inoculum, the recirculation would be stopped when approximately 500 millilitres remains in the feed tank. The flow direction of the pump is then reversed, the retentate valve is closed and the pump is switched on, drawing approximately 500 millilitres of permeate back through the TFF manifold. Finally, the retentate valve is opened and any solution remaining in the retentate line is collected. Depending on the environmental sample being concentrated, the difference between the original and concentrated samples may not be apparent by eye. Total cell counts using epifluorescence microscopy clearly detail the difference in cell numbers between the original and concentrated samples. Alternative counting methods, including the use of flow cytometry, are available as relatively inexpensive and straightforward methods for determining the concentration of bacteria in an aqueous sample.